Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Pointy Not Sharp. Today we're taking a look at a KS98 bayonet. Uh, it's an Imperial German bayonet, and I've got the German flag here, but I don't have an Imperial German flag, so bear with me. Now, these are actually quite scarce bayonets. You don't come across them very often. And uh, they went on to inspire the uh, the dress bayonets, commercial dress bayonets that were used throughout Germany during the Second World War. Now, as I said, it's called the KS-98, which is short for Kurzer Seitengewehr 98. Uh, Kurzer Seitengewehr German is uh, short bayonet. So it's a short bayonet 98 for the Gewehr 98 rifle. Now, they didn't start making them in 1898. They started a couple of years later in 1901, and they continued production through until 1915. However, it's not clear how many were made. And uh, they were made by about, I think it was eight German manufacturers, and there were eight of the pretty common ones you'd expect. Most of them in Solingen, a couple in Saul. Like, uh, you've got Alexander Koppel, Effort, you've got uh, ENF Horstar, um, yeah, just the usual suspects for manufacturing blades for Germany. Now, the history of this bayonet. In uh, 1901, they were adopted uh, for use with uh, machine gun crews. Ah. As you can see here, they've got quite a short little handy blade. Uh, and they're actually issued to a number of specialist troops in the years that followed. So I've got a little bit of a list of all the different um, troops they've uh, been issued to. Bear with me. So we've got uh, airship troops, machine guns, uh, aviators or flyers, uh, telegraph uh, mechanics, fortress telephone mechanics, uh, pioneer searchlight teams, ski battalions. Uh, they were used with the Navy as well, the Kriegsmarine. I don't know if they're called the Kriegsmarine in Imperial Germany, the Imperial German Navy. However, I don't know if they were widely used or only used in um, small spe uh, specialist roles. And then they were used in a bunch of the colonies as well. Like they were used in uh, German Southwest Africa, the uh, Cameroon uh, Schutztruppe, the Cameroon Police Trooper, the Togo Police Trooper, and the German East Africa. Or used in German East Africa. So as you can see, they were quite widely used. And the early ones actually came with a pressed leather handle. You'll note this one has wood. So from 1901 uh, one to 1913, or yeah, 1913, these were made with uh, pressed leather handles. Now, because a lot of these were used in um, the colonies throughout Africa, the leather rotted off pretty quick. So as a result, from 1913 onwards, they started manufacturing them, not exclusively, but uh, some with... Um, wooden handles and some with a um, like a vulcanized red rubber uh, I can't remember the exact uh, name of the um, material I think they just call it a composite material and um, yeah they're, they're less common than the leather ones primarily you'll come across the, uh, the leather ones if you come across these at all so they're not very common at all now jump into the construction there is something about this which is quite interesting that you won't find on other German bayonets. So we've got a pretty standard Mauser style blade, nothing too exciting. True edge, fuller, slight false edge. Uh, however, you'll note it has a sawback. Now quite, oh that's filthy. Quite a few German bayonets did come with sawbacks, but they generally had a 6% rule where only about 6% of the bayonets issued uh, had a sawback on them. That was different with the KS-98. With the KS-98, every bayonet came with a sawback. I'm not sure how many teeth there are there. You can count them yourself if you want. Other than that, um, pretty standard German. Just got cool back cross guard. Uh, only slight ears there. No muzzle ring as per normal. Inspection slot up there. Uh, wooden grips with our two screws, so they're screws, not rivets. As you can see, they screw on this side and they're flat on this side. And then moving down to the pommel, we have a nice big eagle head pommel. This is something you saw on a lot of uh, earlier Prussian bayonets, like uh, from the 1850s, I think it is. And uh, I believe this is really the last bayonet to ever make use of it. Like maybe some of those. Um, dress bayonets that took inspiration from this hazard as well, but this is really sort of the last place you see it. And then, um, other than that, standard bayonet or Mauser bayonet, it's got a uh, pommel with the um, cleaning rod hole going through the center, and then standard push button. This one's a bit seized up. 
And then moving down to the scabbard, it's um, actually a bit narrower than other males of scabbards. So it looks the same as all the others. It's got the same frog stud, but it's a bit skinnier. So is the blade, actually. Uh, so this won't fit a standard Mauser bayonet. Uh, this one doesn't have any markings on it, but it's pretty corroded, so who knows. Otherwise, you just got your little screw holding the mouth in. And as you can see, blade only goes in one way. Like so. Now, in terms of markings... Um, pretty standard German markings, however you do come across some interesting ones that you don't tend to find very often on other German bayonets of the time. But starting off, we've got our proof marks. And the same place as you find on all your uh, German bayonets. So we've got uh, letters underneath crowns, I can't make out these ones because they're a bit far gone. But just there above my thumbnail, where you find your waffle nuts on uh, the later ones, the World War II ones. Then on the Ricasso, you'll have your manufacturer's uh, details. Again, the same with uh, all German bayonets, so in F Horster, Zollingen. Zollingen, of course, being the town where um, most um, knife making in Germany sort of traditionally been going on since about the 1400s. Very, very famous town for uh, arm and arms and armor manufacturing. And then um, you also have a property mark here on the spine, if I can get to focus on the spine. Now up the top we have the crown and W, and uh, that's the property mark for uh, Kaiser Wilhelm II. And underneath that we have a 13, and that's the year of manufacture, if I can make that focus for my camera. There we go. And I'm not sure what the marking beneath it signifies, but it's another part of that um, property mark. And the only other kind of marking you will come across are unit markings. You won't always come across them. Um, they are actually a bit on the, uh, the rare side. This one doesn't have any. But often what you'll find is uh, markings on the cross guard with um, an abbreviation for what type of um, force they were issued to with a number for what number rifle or bayonet it is. Now, I've also got a list here of all the different uh, codes you'll find on these for unit markings and what they mean. So if you have an L, that's for airship troops or uh, Luftschiffer, I think that's how it's pronounced, I'm probably wrong. Uh, MGA is for machine gun. F is for aviators or flyers. Uh, T is for telegraph troops. FFK is for fortress telephone. Uh, PS is pioneer searchlights. SB is ski battalions. Uh, this is a mouthful. OMDMCA is navy. KS is the German Southwest Africa. SK is the Cameroon Schutztruppe. Uh, again, I'm probably mispronouncing this. My German is terrible. Uh, PTK is the Cameroon uh, Police Trooper. And PT is the uh, Togo Police Trooper. Oh, sorry, and... Uh, S-C-H-D-O-A is the German East Africa. So, as I said, you'll usually find that on the cross guard on one side with a number next to it. And you might find it on the scabbard as well. But a uh, very, very cool bayonet. Very happy to be able to have a look at it today. I uh, don't come across too many. And, uh, yeah. I'd love to see one, actually, with the... Um, the composite grips, the uh, the vulcanized rubber, because I haven't um, had a look at one. Like I've, I've come across plenty of pressed leather and plenty of wood, but you don't come across too many of the um, different composite grips. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Um, if I've made any mistakes or you have any other cool information about these, please feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear from you.